So I want to have just a few slides, and then we'll actually jump into the demo itself. But you know, what does BCM include? And by the way, some of you old Footprints users might know this, of course, by the original name, which was Footprints Asset Core. But given the fact that Remedy, Remedy Force, and Footprints can now all leverage this product, they thought it and, and appropriate to rename it to just BMC Client Management. So as you can see from this slide, it's a suite of modules, and you can buy those, uh, you know, ad hoc, uh, or you can get the entire suite. And of course, your Brightstar representative could talk about where the breakpoints are in, in doing that. But at its most basic level, of course, before you can really do anything else, is the discovery and inventory. So there are two modes of discovery, since Dick mentioned uh, Remedy for Summer 16. When you initially go out and do your discovery run, it is being done, obviously, in an agentless basis because we don't even know what's out there yet. And that will bring back the basic information about the machine and, you know, where it sets and the 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 basic configuration of that machine, and that's what's going to be available to you in Remedy Force now uh, uh, to, to, to leverage within the service desk itself. Uh, if you then push an agent out to that machine, then that in enables all of these other functions that you see here on the screen. And just as an FYI for you Remedy Force users, it, even though you're going to get the inventory discovery, discovery agent list free, there are then uplifts you can buy if you want to add into some of these uh, these other modules. But let's talk about really what you're kind of doing there. Um, I'm not going to do them necessarily in the order we've got there. If we jump down to the second row, the most frequent things people do once they get the inventory uh, from the discovery is they use the remote control feature where I can just look at any one of the devices, I can right mouse click, say remote control, and be able to take over control of that session and do what I might need to do to help to uh, respond to whatever those users' needs were that were over there. I have the ability to uh, obviously push patches to that machine, uh, again, through the service desk if I have that integration, or if not, just as part of the standalone solution, we have a very comprehensive patch management, and I'll talk a little bit about that uh, later as we get into it. I have the ability to go in and do policy compliant, right? What is the What are the software configurations you allow? What's prohibited software in your environment? Uh, do I want to set up like power policies that all machines have to have, you know, monitors go uh, go dark after 30 minutes and things of that nature to kind of have a green initiative going on? So those policies around how machines are configured, including power, is a nice thing to, to have up in there. I can even get down into managing the devices themselves, right? I can do things like disable uh, USB drives, uh, disable DVD burning on a machine or a selected group of machines. So really what BCM is this is the complete cradle to grave life cycle of what those assets are, including the financial history, including the ability to not only push patches, but to push software applications and monitor those software licenses to make sure that we stay in compliance. And then last but not least, a lot of our clients will actually use the OS deployment module, which gives you some abilities, especially now that we have a new Windows OS out, it might be appropriate to think about how you're going to migrate users to Windows 10, and this would certainly be a, uh, a, a great solution to look at for that. And we'll talk about these in a little bit more detail. So the wheel here really kind of gives you the sequence of how you would normally do things. Again, you start off with the basic discoveries there. Uh, then I can deploy my agents and be able to do things like distribute software, distribute images. I can detect vulnerabilities based on those policy compliances and then remediate what those are if you have certain policies or STIGs that you have to do to stay within compliance in your industry or PCI compliance issues. We can put those into the system and, and monitor how well people are doing against it. Uh, patch management, very, very strong. And, you know, as you'll see on a slide later, not only patching Windows OSs, but a lot of the third-party apps that you see out there, you know, uh, Java and, and uh, WinZip and, and those types of things out there. Uh, we talked about power on the other page. I won't do that. Again, complete financial information can be tracked there. Uh, with the remote control, of course, you're going to be able to uh, uh, 
do repair and remediation a lot quicker. And then, as importantly, we're going to be able to track, well, what's the current status of that asset until ultimately we dispose of it or take it off lease or whatever the, uh, whatever the case may be. So I kind of used this uh, moniker here earlier, created a great financial management, but when purchasing warranty, in-service, expiration, disposal, just another way of looking at that one. One of the easiest paybacks that uh, a lot of their clients see is a, now a very easy way to do automated software license tracking because we can keep track, obviously, during a discovery run, we're going to see what software is installed on our various devices that, uh, that we have on our scan run there. And then with inside of the tool itself, we will keep track by software license type what software we bought, how many licenses of Office and then SQL Server and those types, how many we bought, and then we'll take the discovery run. We'll compare that back to uh, you know what our license count says and give you some compliance and some graphics and you know very easily be able to see well where is the where is the software installed and you know avoiding one one audit itself from you know a Microsoft or you know a, a, a Oracle or a BMC or whomever can save you obviously uh, a lot of uh, ducks there. And, and one of the reasons we're able to handle software so easily there is we actually have a software catalog that's part of the suite. And so what, what the benefit is uh, there is we're able to you know, understand and normalize what kind of data you get back. We know that there are certain modules that make up an Office Professional Plus, right? Uh, in that way, it makes it a little bit easier not only to do the software license monitoring, but the normalizations that you would see in the report instead of there being 17 ways to describe uh, uh, Microsoft Word. And you know, while we're talking about software, one of the inherent uh, capabilities within the system, too, is to track software usage, right? A lot of companies will find that they've deployed, uh, you know, software licenses like an Adobe Professional, for example, and then, you know, they don't know whether people are really using it or whether they got it for a one-time project. Well, you can run reports that say, you know, let's say do it for Adobe Professional, show me where all it's installed, and give me a count of the last time and the number of times somebody's accessed it in the last six months. That would certainly probably produce for you a a list of possible harvesting opportunities to pull those licenses back in and deploy somewhere else versus continuing to just buy uh, to buy new licenses. This just kind of gives you the picture at, a, at another group, but I, one of the things I wanted to point out here why this product is so easy to manage in, in addition to the fact that it's got wizards and, and kind of expert guidance throughout it is we give you. Uh, different ways to just quickly have filters on this, if you would, right? We have these groups you can set up, both device groups and user groups, and just think of that as a, a filter you create to put on all of your inventory such that, for example, maybe I create a group called uh, Machines Running Windows 7 64-bit. Then when I get ready to push an update or push a patch or whatever, instead of going out and having to find all of the machines that receive that patch, I would just grab the Windows 7 64-bit group, and then it knows all of the underlying technology. So again, it just it makes the product very, very easy to manage on a day-to-day -day, uh, uh, life cycle there. Another thing, and a lot of you probably know this, but the architecture of BCM also enables it to work in a variety of different environments. Obviously, what you're seeing here is my, my primary asset core server where we're keeping track of the information that the agent does, and typically we will have that hooked up to your service desk, whether that be you know Remedy Force or Footprints or, or Remedy or whatever. And then, of course, you'll have your machines out in the, uh, in the ether there. Where we want to take advantage of some kind of bandwidth control and all, though, if you have a number of machines at a remote location, we can just take a local PC there and call it a relay agent, and then we push the patch or the application or the OS or whatever it may be to that particular device, and it can handle the local machine. So it keeps your traffic down and allows you to get a little bit uh, uh, more easily done there. And again, multiple relay agents. But this last little pop-up up here in the upper hand is probably something that's kind of unique uh, without going through a lot of hassle uh, to BMC Client Manager in that we can set one of these relays up in your DMZ, 
And then the folks that you have that are traveling, you know, they're in the Marriott or they're in the Starbucks and they just jump on the local Wi-Fi, that agent on that machine can come through your DMZ and still talk back to our master server here and thus receive any needed patches or updates or whatever it may be that they need to check in, even though they're not on your uh, local area network. So that makes it extremely valuable for people who do have a lot of uh, remote folks uh, in the field there. I've mentioned patch, and I just think this is a good slide to throw up. So as you would expect, it does everything around the, the Windows operating system, but it also goes out and grabs these other typical third-party types of patches and keeps things like Java updated and, and so forth. And the way we do this is we leverage a, a, an OEM relationship that we have, so you don't have to be involved in this, but we we go and pull the patches down from Shavlik, who has an excellent reputation for testing patches and assembling patches in the logical order they need to be, but we then use uh, BCM's uh, deployment engine to push those patches out because it's much more efficient in the way that uh, we do it in here. So be aware that that's there, and, and we'll talk a little bit about that when we get into the live code as well. Just before we do that, though, I did want to point out a couple of uh, new features in the latest release, which is 12.1 of, of what's out there. And it's really around some changes to the OS deployment, some new options around when you will want to allow reboots. Uh, I've talked about how easy it is to use because of these application wizards and instant experts. They you know, made some enhancements there, made some enhancements to the operational rules that are out there as well. So I just want to hit on a couple of these. The most important one, and I don't expect you to read everything that's on the screen, but since you're going to get a copy of this presentation, I wanted this material to be in there. But if you are doing OS deployment today and you're on a version 12 or, or lower, please make note that there are some things you have to do before you perform that upgrade or you will get yourself in a world of trouble. Uh, so kind of read the information we're going to provide here via this. If you have any questions, we have upgraded a lot of people to 12.1. We have some absolute uh, excellent experts on our staff around OS deployment. So feel free to just give us a call. We'll set up a con call for you to talk to some of our folks about what you have to do and should you use the automatic method or the manual method of doing it and give you some guidance there uh, just to make sure that uh, you take, take advantage of the new one. And basically, a lot of the stuff around the uh, deployment side is that now there's a single OSD manager, but then you can have multiple image repositories. And that's a little bit different approach as, that you had before with, you know, multiple OSD managers. And again, we can discuss all of that with you if you want to set up a call there. Uh, we also now, uh, in the 12.1, uh, um, have the ability to do the Windows imaging through a USB uh, device. So that's something that's kind of new out there. Um, as part of that OS imaging, uh, we now have the ability to just go out and look up all the drivers for a particular model of machine. Now, obviously, this is going to be the you know, the, the, the top 10 Dell laptops and HP laptops and Lenovo laptops. And I'm not saying there won't be some obscure one out there, but, you know, a lot of that is out there. And now instead of trying to figure out what device goes with what, we can actually go out, grab a list of all the drivers for a particular uh, configuration of uh, manufacturer's product and get those drivers loaded. So, again, that's just something that saves you a little bit of time and keeps you from having to go do some digging because I'm getting an error message. One of my devices is not working at all. Uh, another change is if, if there's just a small change to an OS image, I don't have to do a complete relay down of the image. I can just do a differential, send the, the parts that's changed there. So that will save some people some, uh, some time and effort as we go through there. And this is just a sample of, you know, now under global settings here, I can go in and define what are my blackout periods in effect that I don't want to allow machines to go through rebooting booting for whatever uh, whatever reason we might need to do that. That's a new feature in 